sure if it's an aspen or a birch tree, go up to the tree, rub your hand on it. You're gonna get this like white powder on your hands. Now this white powder, you can try it if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> this That's white right. powder was traditionally used by the indigenous people here in Saskatchewan as a sunscreen. So it has an extra Oh wow, sunscreen, can yeah, you try it? Yeah, <laughs> it off the tree and then rub it on their face. Okay, so. sunscreen. Sure. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Alright, so this is the trailhead for the interpretive trail. Now one thing I'm going to kind of point out before we get started, there is quite a bit of poison ivy in the park and on this trail. Oh. So we have a little picture of it right here, but I will point it out when we get, when we get to it. Um, it's not as much of a concern this time of year. The way poison ivy works is poison ivy has kind of an oily waxy taste. Nice you can see here these big yellow leaves right here with the big jagged edges those are going to be poison ivy so in the summer it's really easy to identify they're really bright green and they're very shiny because of that waxy coating so nice jagged edge different than something like this that has a rounded edge so really big leaves jagged edge and in the summer really bright green and shiny so just to look out for those ones How's it going, guys? It's awesome. <laughs> We saw more of them dying because of how shallow Pasco Lake is, as opposed to Echo, Michigan, and Catepla. So the interesting thing about invasive species here. Are you thirsty? Any part of the trail? <laughs> we will take a break once we get to the top. All right. It's the steepest now, steepest of the hike now. After this, we're gonna take a break. Come on, guys! Taas taas na jud ni pero kaya ra. Awo na like in tang sa libret. To fall, fall leaves, fall colors. Take a nice water break, take a breather. Made it, but a little bit struggle. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, hardest part of the hike. If you can do that, the rest of the hike is a breeze. Yeah. <laughs> So 
Well, the bigger ones, the little bit more mature, now they have more experience with this, right? They have more experience with winter and the changing of the season. So they're going to take a little bit longer. You don't get to play. Keep going. You don't get to play. that we have here in the park. So right here, we've got an aspen tree. Mm -hmm. Lots of people, it looks similar to like a birch tree. Um, lots of people confuse it because the bark looks similar. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I like to do, if you're not sure if it's an aspen or a birch tree, go up to the tree, rub your hand on it. And you're gonna get this like white powder on your hands. No. Now this white powder, you can try it if you want. Um, <laughs> this That's white right. powder was traditionally used by the indigenous people here in Saskatchewan as a sunscreen. So it has an Oh wow. Eye. Sunscreen. Can yeah, you try it? Yeah, it's awesome. Rub it off the tree and then rub it on their face. Okay, so. sunscreen. Sure. <laughs> I need it. It's an SPF of 5. So yeah. that's the greatest protection, but better than nothing. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So the other cool thing about aspen trees is the largest organism in the world is an aspen grove. So what happens is, unlike trees like conifers, which produce cones, and that's how the seeds then reproduce. Mm -hmm. Aspen trees, they grow up their roots and little trees grow up from the roots. Mm -hmm. So all the trees are connected. So if you look in this one area here, all these aspen trees in this area is one tree. What? <laughs> Just yeah. one? So you can see as you're walking, aspen trees will grow in little groups or little groves. So the largest organism in the world is an aspen grove in Colorado. Yeah, there's a, that's the name of the city, right? Yeah, aspen yeah. Colorado. So it's really, yeah, it's a really interesting tree. Um, but like I said, similar to birch, so if you ever aren't sure, go up, touch it, and if you get that white powder on your hair, actually it's edible. Like here, it's like a needle. One. What's the name of this? Hawthorn. Hawthorn. Oh yeah, very sharp. <laughs> what is Those that? are sprinklers. Okay. <laughs> They are sprinklers that are used to drain our sewage lagoon. Ooh. <laughs> so when our sewage lagoon gets full, we turn the sprinklers on. It is treated, so it is not harmful. However, if you ever see these sprinklers on, I wouldn't run through them. Now, we usually <laughs> close the trail when they're on, um, but that's why we have a farmer bale in this area, so that we can use those sprinklers. So I like mm -hmm. to point that out before everyone goes running into the field to take pictures yeah. of <laughs> So a hot, nice hot day, sprinkler seems like a good idea, but I would these ones. <laughs> are these like planted? planted? Man, no, these are native to Saskatchewan. Whoa. Wow. Most of them, like the trees in this area, this is all native. Mm. So the trees that you're going to see in the campground, um, we plant like White-tailed deer, yeah. So white-tailed deer and mule deer have slightly different shaped antlers. This white-tailed deer, wow. they have kind of one main antler and the other prongs wow. that come up out of it. Mule deer will have more of Y and V shapes. They'll grow more upwards with then their points growing off of those main points. In the springtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of times if you see like scrapings on a tree, the antler will scrape their, the deer will scrape their antlers for multiple different reasons, sometimes trying to get them off. Um, males will also use it to mark their territory. So it's kind of putting their scent on a different tree. You'll still get some deer, but they're going to move throughout these thick areas a lot less. So we're going to get smaller animals. So things like rabbits and raccoons and squirrels and birds and porcupines. Porcupines are a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, I have here, these are some porcupine quills. So you can pass those around if you want. So they're big quills. Um, and what happens with porcupine quills is when they get stuck in something, they have barbs on them, similar to like a fish hook. So it's a lot harder to pull out. You can't just pull it out like a needle. Um, it has barbs on it, so you kind of have to rip it out. So yeah, they're a lot bigger than people think. You often don't get to see them up.
sign if you're interested in doing any of the other trails in the parks mm -hmm. um we have hot dogs and stuff and there is a scavenger hunt you can do as well so i hope you guys have a good rest of your day thank you so much yeah. 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 yeah so all the trails are color coded so on the map if the trail has a blue line you'd follow the dark blue post so like badger trails orange deer trails oh falling leaves one more 